I want to talk about something today that I've sort of touched on in past videos but haven't really gone deep into and what it is it's it's proof that we're headed for a complete disaster guys and not just with the US but with the global economy because of how things are run and the reason for that is because they just won't let it fail and I'm gonna get into this a lot to let you know what I mean. So first I'm going to give you a few specific examples of the most recent uh, scenarios of them just not letting it fail and then we'll talk about it you know overall and what the Fed's doing to help along with that. So the first thing that I just came across is a new program for people who have a VA loan that are delinquent okay and instead of letting them fail instead of letting them go into foreclosure what are they going to do instead? They're going to bail them out. All right. Then let me just preface this with saying, it's not like I want to see more homeless veterans. Unfortunately, there's far too many of them already and helping them stay in their homes isn't necessarily a bad thing, except for they're not letting them fail, right? They're not letting people that who are not able to pay the bills fail. You could argue and say that, well, if anybody deserves that, it's veterans. And I agree, but the problem is they do this with everything in our society today. And my guess is that if there was another type of government-backed loan that had major delinquencies, they'd be doing the same thing, AKA FHA loans. They have programs for that now where you can get a 40-year mortgage, right? Well, a couple months ago, I did a video about this because there are about, 40,000 veterans right now that have a VA loan that are facing foreclosure and instead of letting them go into foreclosure what they did a few months ago is they gave them another moratorium they said don't worry you don't have to pay the mortgage for like six months you know until we can figure something else out well now they have figured something else out and what that is is they're giving them an additional two and a half percent rate loan on top of the loan they already have in order to try to bail them out. So basically what they're trying to do is they're trying to adjust the monthly payments of the people who are in trouble and cannot pay. They're giving them additional VA guaranteed loans with a two and a half percent interest rate. Because right now you have 6,000 borrowers with VA loans who are in foreclosure right now and an additional 34,000 who are seriously delinquent, who are on their way to being foreclosed eventually. And it was back in December of 2023 that they put a pause on this and until they could come up with this solution. And right now, the pause on their payments is set to expire by May 31st. And now they're saying, well, we need to extend this pause even further until more of these veterans can get their hands on the money in order to save themselves from foreclosure. They also say we want to urge the VA to eliminate any rules that unnecessarily limit access for borrowers who previously received unaffordable loan modifications. This is not me making this up, guys. This is what they say, all right? When a veteran falls on hard times, we work with them and their loan servicers every step of the way to help prevent foreclosure, including offering repayment plans, loan modifications, and more. But for some veterans who are still needing additional support after those steps, that's where this program comes in. This will help ensure that when a veteran goes into default, there's an additional affordable payment option that will work in a higher interest rate environment so they can keep their homes. So they're just going to do whatever it takes to make sure these people don't lose the house, guys. Like. And like I said, I'm not against trying to help veterans. They fought and served for this country. If anybody deserves the help, it's them, not corporate America or anybody else. But this applies to a lot of different things right now. And this is just the most recent example, which is why I'm picking on it. It's not like I'm against keeping veterans in the house. I'm against all of the extra programs that are designed to do this because the very next one that is kicking the can down the road and not letting it fail, for example, is the Biden Loan Forgiveness Program. We have something we haven't talked about in a long time for student loans. The latest thing that they're trying to do is they're trying to eliminate interest on student loans, which would potentially help an additional 23 million Americans, okay? lower the amount they're going to have to pay for their student loans and clearly this is in order to obtain votes which we're not going to get into the political side of things but it is the case and even says so here in the news story 
what he wants to do is cancel up to $20,000 of accrued and capitalized interest for borrowers regardless of income, which the administration estimates would help about 23 million student loan borrowers. And then it goes on to say here, this issue remains high on the agenda for young voters, especially the ones who have student loan debt. So this new plan automatically cancels debt for any borrowers who are eligible for certain forgiveness programs who entered repayment decades ago, who enrolled in low financial value programs, or who are experiencing hardship. And if this gets pushed through, it would take effect sometime this fall, just conveniently right before the election. And so the worst part about this, and the reason why I'm against it, is not because it helps uh, people who have student loans, but because the burden falls on the future taxpayers, okay? You know, people who are not even born yet are gonna be paying for this as well as you and me, especially if you live a nice long life, you're gonna be paying for this student loan forgiveness, okay? And I know a lot of people who are for this will say, oh, how come it's okay to help Israel and U Ukraine and all these other countries, and it's not okay to help our own citizens with the student loan debt? Fair enough argument, guys, I get it. I am with you on that as well. But the problem is there's just too much of everything, you know? One thing people misunderstand about me, I'm against all this stuff. I'm against all of this free help. I'm against, you know, sending all our money away to everybody. You know, somebody mentioned it from my video the other day, like, oh, Michael, if, if the Fed raised interest rates to 10%, all the small businesses would go under. Well, how about we subsidize them for, for once, you know? Why don't we raise interest rates to 10% for everybody? And if a small business needs a loan, we can give them a loan for 2.5%, like they're doing for the veterans right now, and keep this, the lifeblood of America alive during recessionary times by giving them access to cheap capital when everybody else has to pay 10%. Why not? They bend the rules for everybody else, especially corporate America. Why can't we do it for small business owners? So these are like the two most recent examples of them not letting it fail, okay? And the Fed has a huge hand in this whole scheme of not letting it fail, guys, because in case you don't know, the Fed has something called a dual mandate. And their dual mandate is to simultaneously keep inflation near their 2% goal while also keeping unemployment low. And right now they are failing at that dual mandate pretty miserably with inflation still raging out of control. And so along with this dual mandate, one thing that they're trying to do is keep the economy going and to keep everything in the Goldilocks zone and perfect forever. That's what their, their goal seems to be as of late. You know, they don't want us to go into a recession and they're willing to do basically anything it takes to make sure that doesn't happen. And because of how good the Fed is at manipulating the entire global economy at this point, you could even argue that the last couple of recessions were anomalies because the Fed basically failed. They weren't able to achieve that dual mandate. But right now they're gonna fail again because what they're trying to do is keep the economy together when it's mathematically impossible to do so with their method. Because right now we have low unemployment, but we don't have low inflation. And if they want to achieve low inflation, they're gonna have to achieve high unemployment. So either way, they're gonna fail this time around again, just like they did in 2008 and it's just a matter of time before it fails pretty miserably. And one thing that our leaders, especially the Fed, even though they're not our leaders, but they're in charge of our monetary policy, one thing that all these people are failing to understand right now is that we need to have recessions to keep the economy healthy, okay? But they're trying to prevent any possibility of any future recession. And that's proven by their monetary policy. You know, they want us to be basically in fantasy land 24 seven and never have to experience another, another downturn ever again. At least that is their wishful thinking, which is not gonna happen. It might look like it's happening right now on the surface because things haven't really cratered yet, but all they're doing is delaying that from happening. They're not preventing it. The kind of example or analogy you can give to this is like a parent that has a kid that they completely shelter and don't want them to ever experience anything negative. You know, you can't ever be called a bad name. You can't ever get in a fight. You can't ever, you know, hear a bad word. You can never watch a movie above a G rating. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's what this is equivalent to. And to make matters even worse, actually, 
over the past 30 or 40 years, our economy has gotten so used to how well things have been going overall that everybody's on the same page with this. Like, hey, let's just keep this going because this is great, you know? We're all making money. It makes sense to prevent these recessions because we all get richer when we do it. We print more money and we all own a bunch of assets. So every time we print that money, inflation rages higher and so do the price of our assets. So these guys who are in charge are loving this. And so the status quo right now is let's do everything in our power to make sure it doesn't fail, right? Which is where the title of my video comes in. This is proof that we are headed for financial disaster, guys. We really are. It's just a matter of when, not if. This is equivalent to when is the next hurricane gonna hit Florida? It's not if it's gonna happen, it's when it's gonna happen. It's gonna happen. But the big picture that they're missing is that we need recessions in order to actually have a truly healthy economy, okay? And one great analogy I heard recently on this is you can compare the economy to how people need sleep, all right? For two thirds of the day, we're awake. For one third of the day, we're asleep. And the economy's equivalent to that is two thirds of the time it should be going well. And one third of the time, we need to have a recession to sort of cool down and repair all of the things that got overheated and overwhelmed during the good times. In other words, it's a necessary part of the cycle if you want to have balance and order, which as anybody who is paying any sort of attention right now knows that we have no balance and order whatsoever in our system because they won't let it fail. They really, really screwed this up, guys, when we had COVID and you know we should have had a pretty big recession then but they came to the rescue you know printed six trillion dollars like it was no big deal you know sent it all throughout the economy and today we are dealing with the ramifications from that and you know it would have been a bad recession then but now it's going to be much worse when we actually do hit one it's probably even going to be a depression because of how much stimulus was pumped in. We're no longer in a sustainable situation when it comes to home prices, when it comes to stock prices, when it comes to inflation and the cost of living, all of it is unsustainable now. So what they've essentially done is they've made it worse on all fronts because not only did they not let it fail during COVID, which would have gave us a recession that, that back then, but what we wouldn't have because we'd already be probably recovered from that recession and we wouldn't have this massive inflation if they would have just let it fail back then. So I would easily argue that that is the number one complaint most people have with today's economy is how much everything costs. Asset prices, just regular cost of living, it's all too high. So if they would have just let it fail then, we would be in a better position today than we are now. But here's the other thing, guys. Like, now that people have gotten so used to uh, all of this stimulus in the economy and how things are just so artificially propped up, you know, originally the Fed was supposed to just jump in there when we had problems and lower rates and help us out of a recession and help us through liquidity issues when we had them. But now they even come to the rescue even when it's not necessary. And the best example in recent history is let's say, let's use the time period between 2015 and 2020, right before the pandemic, okay? We were already out of the GFC by then. We already had fully recovered from that recession thanks to the stimulus, right? However, if you look at the federal funds rate during that time, they kept it at zero all the way through the GFC and they only started raising it just a little bit starting in 2017 or so, okay? But by the time they got to the middle of 2019, you can see by looking at this chart, they actually raised it up to 2.4%. But then what happened? The stock market started crashing, so they quickly jumped to the rescue and lowered rates once again that back down to zero. And this is reflected in the chart here on the S&P 500. They lay off the brakes and hit the gas like they always do, and then boom, the stock market starts climbing back up after they drop the federal funds rate back to zero. 
And now, when you look at this chart of the S&P 500, you can see the exact same principles at play, however, just on steroids now. And so what I'm trying to sh share with you guys here is that there is no way out of this, okay? They can't keep going down this road forever. You know, they can try, but eventually we're gonna end up in a hyperinflation situation where the dollar is absolutely worthless. Some people would already argue that we've, we're already there, especially if you're struggling to afford your bills today. There are major problems forming in this economy, even though things are supposedly going great, okay? In fact, small business optimism just hit an 11 year low. You know, small businesses had a real tough time during the lockdowns and who can operate, who can't, you know, collecting free money, who can get the free money, who can't get the free money. They had to deal with all sorts of problems like being shut down, hiring difficulties, borrowing costs, which they're still facing today now that many banks don't want to give people loans. But recently, the National Federation of Independent Business, their optimism index fell 0.9 points to 88.5 in March of 2024 which marks the lowest level of business optimism in the U.S. since December of 2012. Well, that was right basically at the end of our recovery period after the GFC. And it's also the 27th consecutive month where the NFIB's Small Business Optimism Index came in below its 50-year average of 98. So basically, for the past two years or so, small businesses have been screaming we're headed for disaster guys and what is the number one complaint from these small businesses and why they're not feeling good about this economy only one word inflation which is all directly related to what we were just talking about the reason we have this level of inflation is, is, is because they will not let it fail and if small businesses aren't feeling good and start going under and closing up shop this is definitely going to cause the next depression because small businesses employ about 61.6 million americans they are responsible for 45 percent of u.s economic activity so small businesses you could say are the lifeblood of this country they have been for you know hundreds of years so this makes their well-being and health critical to the overall state of the u.s economy regardless of what's going on with the stock market and the big tech companies guys that does not reflect the health of our true economy people look at the s p 500 and say oh it's at all-time highs people look at real estate and say oh it's at all-time highs and things must be going well because of that but that is not the true picture of health and you know what's the saddest part of all guys the bullish argument against this you know saying that this is not a bad thing they go on and say that inflation doesn't typically rise during economic slowdowns in fact it's often a sign that the economy is growing quickly with companies being forced to raise prices. Well, newsflash, if you've been paying attention to the video up until now, the reason we have inflation and the reason these companies are being forced to raise prices is not because the economy is doing well. It's because we had a massive injection of cash during COVID, guys, which if that never happened, we would not be in this situation right now. We would not have this crazy inflation. In fact, inflation was very tame until all this happened. You know, like probably you never even heard the word inflation until they printed all this money. And to make matters worse for small businesses, the amount of small businesses that expect higher sales volumes actually fell 18 percentage points in March to a net negative of 18%, guys. So a lot of small business owners think that they're not gonna see their sales tick up anymore. And it's very similar to how real estate is going right now. Like real estate sales are still faltering well below historical averages. And like, yeah, there are some very rich people out there that can afford to buy in this environment, but doesn't reflect the overall status and health of our economy. Small businesses are also not feeling good or planning to hire new people anytime soon either because their hiring plans are now the weakest they've been since May of 2020, and with inflation still weighing on small businesses, 
55% of owners reported lower profit margins in 2023. The idea that they're gonna be hiring more people anytime soon is not gonna happen. In fact, the opposite is likely to happen. You're probably gonna be seeing more layoffs because of this pessimistic outlook and the fact that their profits are dropping and their expectation of sales is going down. So none of this, none of this points to a strong economy, guys. You can say all you want that the sales are up because people have money and uh, you know things are still going strong and blah, 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 blah. But you gotta remember, all, a lot of the money that's being spent right now is money that people just don't have. And that is reflected in the massive credit card debt that is hitting new record highs by the month, by the way, and by the amount of borrowing that people are doing right now against their homes, as well as all of the other delinquencies that we're seeing throughout the economy that reflect that people don't truly have the money that is being spent today. But because for the last 30 or 40 years, they wouldn't let it fail, people get used to that. People get used to being high all the time, right? Nobody wants to come down off of this high and it's gonna be painful, right? It's like everybody's gonna say, oh, well, if we would have just let it fail during COVID, it would have been terrible for everybody. People would be losing their house and losing their jobs, this and that. Like, yeah, that's still gonna happen, by the way. And it's gonna be worse than it would have been back then because they won't let it fail. So congratulations, nobody wants that but now it's gonna be worse when it actually does materialize. So that's where we're headed. Whether you like it or not, this road doesn't lead to anywhere but disaster. I'm not saying it's tomorrow, maybe not even two or three years from now. Maybe it's still got a couple decades left in it before we start to see major problems. I don't know, guys. But one thing I do know for a fact is we can't keep go going down this road. You know, imagine we hit another recession, we hit another depression, and the, the Fed tries to come in, the government tries to come in and bail us out with low interest rates and more money printing, what do you think is gonna to happen to inflation then? Just think about how much things are gonna cost under that scenario. If it's already not bad enough, people are already upset and already complaining, just envision a future where that is the new reality, okay? Because that's probably where we're headed. So if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you subscribe to the channel, and if you don't wanna wait for my next video to come out, Check out this one on the screen right over here, and I'll see you in the next one.